I'm Deborah. I'm the third one on the sheet. <laughs> My friend and I had just been island hopping in Greece for two weeks, and we were on a train in Italy. And she suddenly said to me, when we get to Bologna, I'm going on without you. And I said, what? What are you talking about? We bought train passes. We're supposed to travel together. Where are you going? She shrugged. I don't know. <laughs> and I said, why without me? She said, you get up too late. You walk too fast. You sunbathe topless. <laughs> and we had to sleep outside twice. <laughs> I couldn't believe she was dumping me. I had a plan. I spent my junior year abroad and we were supposed to travel in Europe all summer. And she had now screwed things up with a capital F. <laughs> I went back to Florence where I had an apartment, sat alone looking at a map of Europe. The phone rang, I picked up, pronto. Oh, hi, Grandpa. How are you and Granddaddy doing? Now, I know that sounds like I had two grandfathers who were living together, <laughs> but in my family, we call my grandparents Grandpa and Granddaddy because when I was learning to talk, I could only say Grandpa. So someone, and this was confusing, if someone had the idea that I should call my grandmother Grandpa and my grandfather <laughs> Granddaddy because that's not confusing, right? <laughs> So I'm on the phone with my grandmother, and she says, I'd want to come visit. And I'm thinking, I don't, you know, I don't really want to travel alone by myself this summer, and I really do adore her, but she's a neat freak. She never travels without a AAA triptych, <laughs> and she's my grandmother. <laughs> she's 40 years older than I am. So... <clears throat> I explain my plan. Train travel with no itinerary and very little money. I think this will deter her. Instead, you know, long train trip, tight budget. But I'm speaking her language. She says, what if I give you $200? We meet in Paris. <laughs> She's sporting a fresh perm and a polyester denim outfit. <laughs> I'm not sure she'll recognize me because I've cut off my hair and I have a blonde streak and I'm wearing a big rucksack with the bars on. It looks like I have a sled on my back. <laughs> and I wave, Grandpa, over here. <laughs> and then I see it, the first obstacle in our trip. It is a pyramid of Samsonite American <laughs> tourister <laughs> suitcases. If the 1970s commercial for these th shows a gorilla throwing one around his cage. These are like armored cars. She picks up her cosmetic suitcase from the top of the pile and just stands and waits for me to pick up everything else. And I c walk and careen off of everyone and everything like a drunken pack animal. And I, every time I say to her, could you just carry one of these? She says, where did I put my angina medicine? <laughs> I'm becoming desperate because I am choking under the weight of all this stuff. And so I empty, I throw out everything I can. I tear the few pages out of our one guidebook, Let's Go Europe, and I throw the book away. And while I'm doing this, I see her rummaging in her suitcases, and she pulls out a full-size bottle of Woolite. And I want think, <laughs> what else has she got in there? <laughs> we quickly fall into a routine. We, we pick a train. I somehow managed to heave all of our cargo onto the racks above our seats. We settle in. Sometimes I start telling her about something personal, you know, a, one adult to another, and I think she's listening until she blurts out, when are we getting there? <laughs> and I want to say, where? We don't have an itinerary. What are you, six years old? But, of course, I bite my tongue. When we, get, when we decide to stop for the day, we change money, and she nudges me. Ask them if 
And then we go to the tourist information desk and she nudges me, ask them if, because it's as if she thinks I can speak every language and every dialect of every language in every country we are in. Me, I'm the one who couldn't learn the word grandma. <laughs> She's really excited to see Amsterdam. And I talk it up. I say, I know just where to go. It's a great place. There's a nice breakfast. We're walking along the edge of the red light district, and we're walking through crowds of young kids who look, well, kind of like I do now, but with hair shellacked up into pointy, menacing mohawks. We get to the hotel and look at the breakfast room, and instead of the white linen tablecloths that I remember, there are oriental rugs on the tables and dogs and cats lounging around on top. We get up, squeeze into our garish purple colored room, and my grandmother sits down and cries. She's been dreaming of windmills and tulips, and I've brought her to a bordello. <laughs> she begs me to get a sleeping car to go to Copenhagen. And I think this is a total waste of money. We could just sleep in our seats. But I feel bad about Amsterdam, so I agree. And I stare at the ceiling all night while she and a stranger sit below and talk the entire time. And I swear, not once does she interrupt him to ask him, <laughs> when will we get there? <laughs> when we do arrive, we start our routine, and then she says it. Ask them if, and I snap. <laughs> they speak English here. You ask them. And I turn around walk out of the station and leave her there. And I walk the streets and I am f angry and fuming and I just want to go back in and say, I'm going on without you. You get up too early, <laughs> you walk too slowly, and whenever we go to a museum, you sit outside because you're saving money for souvenirs. <laughs> but of course I don't do this. I love my grandmother. And besides, this is supposed to be the trip of her lifetime. So I decide I'll just do whatever she wants from now on. And what she wants that night is Chinese food. <laughs> At the restaurant, I say to her, Grandpa, I want to apologize for this morning. I was really tired. She looks up from her menu. and She says, you should get some counseling. <laughs> And I look up at the Danish waitress, and I say, I think we'll start with an order of egg rolls, please. <laughs> the tension between us fades a lot by the time we get to Switzerland, and my, where my grandmother's euphoric. She's so flying so high in that country that she bu even buys me a cuckoo clock. <laughs> So we are in great moods by the time we get to Florence, where we're about to spend our fifth and final week together. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Five. <laughs> uh, I'm almost broke, so I sleep at a fr some friend's apartment, and she gets a room at a small hotel. Um, I'm a little worried about her being alone, but now that we're in Italy where I can speak a little of the language, she's like, you know, I'll be fine. I don't really uh, need your help. Uh, so she so she goes and stays at this place, and she's fine. Uh, until one morning when the phone rings. It's 5 a.m., and it's the police. And I think, oh, my God, she's had a heart attack. And Italian words are just spilling out of the telephone at supersonic speeds, and I can't understand what they are saying, and I just say, I'll be right there. When I see my grandmother, she's sobbing as she tells me about how she put her passport, airplane ticket, money, all of her valuables in her purse, and then put it under her pillow before she went to sleep. And when she woke up, it was gone. There's no sign of a break-in. 
The police even says it, the policeman even says it doesn't make any sense. It's like there's been some kind of special ops mission <laughs> where my grandmother's purse is the high value target, you know, Operation Grandma's handbag or something. She I'm I feel guilty of course because I let her sleep there alone. She's shaken but she's also being transformed by this and she sort of becomes like Wonder Woman <laughs> and tells me she doesn't need me to go with her on public transportation to Rome to the airport to see her off. She can do it by herself. She does a dry run two days before <laughs> she leaves just to prove it to me and then does take all of her stuff onto trains and multiple buses and barely makes her flight, but she does get home safely. Now I'm about to leave Italy as well in a couple of weeks. I have money in a joint bank account back in the US and so I call my father and I say, hi, could you wire that thousand dollars to me? And he says, no. I spent it. <laughs> and I say, oh, okay, well, when do you think you'll have it? And he says, I won't. I can't help you. You'll have to find another way. I hang up, I sit, I think. Now what? Place another call, and I say, Hi, Granddaddy. Could you put Grandpa on the phone for me? I need to speak with her. Thank you.